we work in it. So if you're not going to tell me where the money's coming from, I'm going to tell you where the money's coming from. It's going to come from even deeper cuts in the unprotected departmental spending budgets of around 14% in total. So you're going to hit the police, you're going to hit the armed forces, you're going to hit local government to pay for this. So you're not going to give me an answer on the eight billion well, where I've, it's I've coming from. It's, uh, you I've, haven't given me an answer. With respect, you've said the economy is going to grow, everything is going to be fine. No, I, I, Somehow I, I, we'll find the money. It's exactly what you attacked Labour no, for again and again. No, no. You can never again say it's another unfunded Labour spending promise. Not after this. Andrew, I come on this programme and say yes, we've got to make difficult decisions in public expenditure. But I won't yes, tell you we've what got they to are. Save... I keep asking you very straight questions about well, where the money's coming from. You, no, you keep saying sensible and balanced, balanced oh. and sensible. That's not with respect exactly what I'm asking. I'm just asking where the money comes from. I've just given you very specific numbers. By the way, you don't get anything like that from the Labour Party. Indeed, they don't even talk about actually, this NHS forward actually, view. Actually, it's very interesting. They're offering less money for the NHS in the first period, well, 2.5 billion, but they are saying exactly how they're going to raise the money. They didn't tell us about this before the election. They certainly didn't spell it out. There are vague words in the manifesto, but they give you no inkling of the radical nature of this reform. So why is Mr. Cameron and the Tories, why are they doing it? I mean, be, be, because they believe in it. So why didn't they tell mm. us? Because they didn't believe they could win an election if they told you what they were going to do, because people are so wedded to the National Health Service. It, it's the nearest we've got to a national religion. It's a kind of national mm. sacred cow. So but the Tory position was the health service is safe in our hands and we're just not going to tell you we're going to change it. blow it up and start again. Can he look me in the eye and tell me he is proud of the decision to remove all disability benefits from a 10-year-old child mm -hmm. who can hardly walk, who cannot toilet herself because she has cerebral palsy? Is he truly proud? The most absurd and offensive nonsense. We have a proud record in this country for the way we treat disabled people. I am not an expert on disability rights in Costa Rica. But I suspect Mr. Vans Aguilar might be better off focusing her efforts much closer to home. The UN should keep their noses out. Dr. Simon Duffy, who is the director of the Centre for Welfare Reform, says that people with disabilities have never before been targeted by welfare cuts to this extent. What you're really facing is this combination of people's income being cut. Now, so there's a whole range of disability benefits that different, pe different groups get. Uh, depending on their circumstances, but most of these have been either suppressed or the rules have been changed so to make it harder for people to claim those benefits. In addition, we've got local authorities who are responsible for what's called social care. Social care is for people with more significant disabilities. Social care has been cut in a period of less than five years by 30%. I've not seen anything like this kind of attack on disabled people uh, and you don't see anything like it in the last 75 years of the welfare state and you don't see anything like it comparing us to other similar countries. Uh, austerity exists in other countries but no other country to my knowledge has targeted disabled people in the way that the UK government has. Medals tonight will be presented by the Right Honourable George Osborne MP, Chancellor of the Exchequer, who is accompanied by Mr Chris Brownridge. First booze that we've heard all week at the Paralympic UK. Stadium. Clearly, you know, whatever the motives, there's clearly a huge compassion deficit here. We've got 60 people <clears> who <throat> have committed suicide and their suicides are linked to uh, benefits. Well, we'll wait for the review, which Sorry, you refuse to publish. And when you get the review out, we'll actually know the no, truth. I reject but that. That's just scurrilous. When you That's talk really to the trust, scurrilous. the trust. So, Sorry, which, which review are you no. talking uh, about? The Department of Work and Pensions is supposed to be reviewing 60 cases where people have yeah. committed uh, suicide. Is that that's Sorry, true, you can't well, make the allegation. No, you are reviewing. No, 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 let's hear the answer. I'm sorry. I'm not prepared to accept cast off allegations about things where people in are you, great are you not No, no, you have to, excuse me, you have to distress, let the Secretary answer. I'm not answer. prepared to allow that to happen. The Department has looked at this and I have to tell you, I am not prepared to accept uh, the welfare changes which have improved so the quality have of lives for all sorts of people. No, we have not carried out a review. Why are you here in Scotland when we have a different philosophy? 
We have not elected you and your Tory cohort. We in Scotland are Jock Tarson's parents. We didn't want you, we didn't need you, we've got more pandas than you, right? We've only got one MP. We want a different Scotland, one that cares for people who are addressed distress and in poverty. You are going to make millions of people homeless, people that really desperately need help. You're making the rich richer and the poor poorer. The people that are going to be in the schemes all across this country are going to oppose you. You are creating your new poll tax. Believe it, that's what you're going to do. You're creating a new poll tax and we're going to see the end of you back to, to England where you belong. Debate and I really want to know why. Laughing in what respect, sorry. Um, in your deputy's um, speech, you seem to be laughing and you must have I have no idea. It. Somebody may have said something to me about something which may not even be related to the debate. I don't know. Because it's obviously it's been in lots of papers and it was shown that, that, that you were laughing. I think it might have been, I don't know because I didn't see it, um, about um, But with respect, arguing. sometimes certain papers want to portray something in a particular way and make an allegation. Absolutely. But it's likely to be untrue. I was not laughing about the debate. I may have laughed because someone may have said something about something else, maybe something that somebody was doing in the, in the chamber. It's a chamber full of things going on at the time. Well, it's something it's serious as serious as the, as the food bank debate. I don't, I don't even know, know if, if I was laughing. Smiling. I may have been smiling. Cameras and videos sometimes pick you up doing things that look like one thing and they're not. So I'm, I'm afraid I'm, 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 I know... You don't think, you don't think the adage of the camera never lies? I don't, don't recall, I don't, no.